On a field trip last year, I met with the bush medicine man Francis Maureen. When I came back in March 94, I contacted him and he agreed to show me some herbs which he often uses to make his remedies. So we went to the woods of the northern range. Okay. For most people, what we have here are common weeds. Things which they will cut down, disregard, discard. Just most people say, oh, just old bush, right? And I'm actually showing people a way that they can take this same old bush and convert it into these medicines we have here, which can be of great healing value. This is the, the creeping marigold. It's called a creeping marigold because it, it makes a flower like a marigold and it creeps all over embankments like this, forming a lush carpet. And it's also called Vepin Caribe in, locally. And uh, it's used for coughs and colds. It makes a syrup, it's made from the flowers in particular, or from the leaves as well. And this syrup has to remove mucus from the lungs and from the bronchial passages. The tea from this plant is also very good for ladies. And uh, in Grenada, where this plant also grows, it's called Zebafam. Zebafam meaning a herb for women. Uh, it's very good for menstrual pain. Did you to tell why they call this plant Granny Backbone? You know, and those old ladies getting, well, old men do the same thing to her, but maybe it's a gender issue. <laughs> it's called lion tasso. It's called monkey ladder, monkey step. It's also called Tarzan vine by young people nowadays. Right? The name lion tasso is, by which it's sometimes called, refers to the, alludes to the resemblance of the fresh, the growing vine to raw beef. But if you look at them, at those out there, you can see how high they're climbing. And you, you can hold on to one of those vines and actually swing across the valley. If you're really daring. <laughs> right? And um, it's very woody. This vine belongs to the legume family. But most times people would not see the leaves, which I have here. Okay. The generic name of this plant is Bohinia. Right, you can hold this piece. Right, this genus Bohinia was named after two French brothers, two botanists. 
And so the, leaf, the leaflets, each leaflet is so, so to speak seen to represent one of the brothers. So this is one brother and this is the other brother. Bohinia. This is Bohinia. There are two species. One is Bohinia cumanensis, one is Bohinia excisor. This is Bohinia excisor. Right? In Bohinia cumanensis, the leaflets are joined. The vine is used as, as the source of a tonic. When it, the pieces of the vine are cut and boiled, it is a red liquid. Okay, this, this plant is the mat root, known as mat root, or crazy mat, or wild treff. Okay, it's a bitter tasting vine with heart shape, sorry, well, heart shape, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's very often come, it's very often found growing along embankments like these. And the, the vine, this is just a young vine here, but the vine tends to run very high up the embankments and the roots go very deep into the soil. All the, the entire parts of this plant are very bitter, bitter tasting. In fact, there are some butterflies that lay their eggs on these plants. And the caterpillars feed on the leaves. And the leaves are rich in alkaloids. And because of the bitter tasting alkaloids in the leaves, no, no birds would feed on these butterflies. Hunters would keep a piece of the root in their pockets when they go hunting. And in the event that they may be stung by a scorpion or bit by a snake. They would chew the leaf as an antidote. Chew it and swallow it. Yeah. And the root is also used in mixtures. There's something, a mixture called, the old Spanish people call it a botella de compuita. Botella de compuita really means butter of contents. That's all it means when translated from the Spanish. And this butter, botella de compuita, is made up of herbs like the Mat root, things like the larvae, the caterpillars that feed on the mat root, and a wide range of other herbs and spices soaked in alcohol. And in the event that a snake bites someone again, they would just take a drink of it. The Anato or Ruku plant. Now the, the Ruku or Anato is a small tree with, which makes very attractive flowers which we can see here. And these flowers are very popular among honeybees. The plant produces fruits in clusters like these born on the end of the branches or close to the end of the branches. Yield a reddish fat soluble dye which is used both in cooking and as a body coloring. I'll open my fruit down and show you. Yeah. Not a good example. Each has a an areola, okay, which is the dye. You can crush the seeds like this, and you get a, a dye like that <laughs> okay now when the uh, the Ameri the uh, Europeans first came to the Caribbean this dye that you see here they, they mixed the dye with other ingredients and that extract was pasted, uh, pasted on the body as a insect repellent so they wouldn't have to worry about the mosquitoes and the gnats in the Caribbean yeah at Christmas time it's used in making pastels it gives the pasta a nice rich color. Yeah, yeah. It's known as the Maljo bean. Okay, Maljo is the local word for bad eye. For Maljo, like someone can look at their child and give the child the evil eye. And people would take the bean from this pot and keep it on the child on a string or on a pin in the hope that, uh, or rather in the belief that the child would not be affected by the evil eye. And once it's affected, is that the plan to find out if it's affected? No, no, this it's, helps prevent it. It helps prevent it. Yeah. Okay. Now, if the child does get maljo, 
the uh, herbs they would use to remove the maljo. And I'll show you some of those. Yeah. And now okay. you show me the broom. Right. So several several plants of the sweet broom are tied, collected and made into a little bundle. And uh, when the, the child is suffering from maljo, as they believe, they would beat the child. And they would say prayers in Spanish, which they call a santo guay. And these prayers accompanied by the flagellation with the Sweet boom are meant to cut the effect of the maljo. <laughs> Not, this one is shadow benny. Right? This one is a seasoning and it's also used for medicine. Most of them can be used for medicine as well, although they are seasoning herbs. Yeah, I know that. And you use the leaves, don't hmm? you? Yeah, they, call it, they also call it fit weed. Or bandania or shadow beni. Okay. This this plant is called Leaf of Life or Wonder of the World. It's called by those names because of the seemingly miraculous quality of the plant in producing young plants of the leaf. At the, along the leaf margin, young plants would emerge and these little points here. And very often school children would take these leaves and place a leaf in their exercise books or their textbooks. And, and the leaves would stay green for a long, long time. And then you can plant it and it would make young, young plants. Back in Arima, at his herb shop, I asked Francis Moran to tell me how he got involved in this business. I started this business just over two years ago. Two, um, two years and four months, to be exact. And, um, I've been involved in this for about 13 years, in this aspect, in terms of actually documenting and gathering information on the local herbs and on the environment. But in another respect, I've been around this activity all my life. In fact, my grandmother, with whom I grew up, she used to make a lot of these herbal remedies in the village of Palo Seco. That's in deep south Trinidad. And a lot of the older people in the village as well used to make a lot of herbal remedies. Most of my staff, as you, as you will see, are young people, and um, try to get the young people involved in the use of the hills. I take young school children, for example, and tours in the forest and they really enjoy them. I'm also trying to show people the potential beauty of the forest. And the fact that if we can preserve the forest, we can forever provide a source of employment for others and enjoyment at the same time.
came in contact with a lot of people who have been using bush medicine as the only form of healing for most of their lives, right? Apart from that, even while on campus, I would go out into the forest and, you know, the evening walks. I would go to the city, you know, there are lots of old ladies in the, in the Port of Spain or San Fernando. Or almost every marketplace in Trinidad, you can find an old lady who makes herbal remedies. And I would go to these old ladies and I would interview them and get information from them about the use of the herbs. Uh, these ladies themselves began to encourage me to not just, they must be always insist that I shouldn't just be gathering all this information, I must make it available to others. So I used to write articles which I published in the newspapers and then I began to sell. So around 1986, 85, 86, 87, I used to sell in, Tunapuna Mar in the Tunapuna market. In fact, I used to sell hoops to finish my first degree at university. I used to go every week and I really enjoyed it because it, it was one of the most enjoyable experiences to me. Mother Lord, 
Nice to meet you. Hello. He sells spices and herbs and condiments in the wholesale market in Port of Spain. Madam Lord, how long have you been selling these herbs and spices? Since you've been a young girl? For 32 years. For 32 years. How old are you now? 64. 60. What is this price? $2. You live in Trinidad? For 45 years now. Okay. And sometime ago you told me you used to do trading on the ships and the boats. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah. Well, I was a young girl in around 16 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm speculating to be a Grenadines. Yeah. So it's like um, Union Island. Uh huh. Canada One. Uh huh. Dimatni. Uh huh. Caracou. Right? We've been trading backward and forward, to and from. It must have been a, a rough life being a young lady with all these men on the ship. No, I had loved it very you much. You loved it? Yes. So you, you handed them? I mean, you know, yeah, okay. yeah. We get along very well. Yeah. They, must, they must have all been in love with you. Yes. It was very pretty and young and nice. Yeah. So. So who, told you, who told you you're not pretty and nice now? Well, age 13. Oh, okay. So I know that. Okay. Mm -hmm.